This is the basics for installing HCF and also probably everything you need to know as a contractor on how to install healthcare facility cable. First, we're going to look at two different cables. This cable is different than this one, and I'm going to show you how. If we open these up, this is the correct tool to use here. This is called a roto split. You can break it with, with uh, diagonal cutters. You can break MC and stuff, but this is actually more technically AC cable than it is MC, which is one of the reasons why we have to use what they call the red devils or these red bushings in here. So we're going to break this open. We're going to open this up and what we're going to find is that we have a bare conductor in here. We're going to look at the, what the code book says about this bare conductor and why we have it. But something you need to know about this conductor is that metallic cable armor or sheath assembly shall itself qualify as an equipment grounding conductor in accordance with 250.118. This is the larger one. And if we were to split this one open, you would see this is the smaller conductor. Now this is actually wrapped around here too much. I would say that's probably all you need to do. And these cables are very different. This smaller conductor is allowed to wrap around the outer jacket of this cable because it doesn't change the whole outer diameter. This larger conductor must get cut off. And what the UL White Book and all the installations say about this conductor is that these conductors are in constant contact with the back strap of this MC cable or AC cable. And it itself becomes a grounding path. So this is one of your grounds and then the green conductor inside here is the other ground for redundant grounding. We have two forms of grounding and the cable actually counts as a ground. And because the cable counts as a ground, we have to use listed connectors that attach to this. So if we were to install this in a box or something, we would cut this portion off like this first. We would cut this back here. Get all this paper out of here. We'd have six inches of free conductor in the box, of course. We follow the regular wiring methods. We would install our listed HCF or MCIA connector. This is a Bridgeport connector. I don't have the box with me, but I can show you some examples on screen of what a listed connector is for grounding and bonding and that it's suitable to be used on this healthcare facility cable. And we wouldn't just install this in the box, just like this. So we would take this connector, we just pop it in the box like this, and then we just go about business as usual. We'd take our ground conductor, we'd tie it with the rest of the grounds with the pigtail here, and then these would be our circuit conductors here. That'd be your hot and your neutral. And that's how simple it would be. And we do the same thing on this cable here, except that we would just wrap this smaller one, cut off the excess, put our connector right on. Don't forget to put your red devil or your anti-short bushing on here. Of course, we didn't install it here because I don't have an extra one, but you would always use an anti-short bushing when you're installing healthcare facility cable right here just slide in there just like this one does and this would be the same way it just goes in there and we don't do anything with these conductors here this bare conductor just simply just exists to bond the back strap of this cable to make this cable also a suitable path for ground so this would be a redundant ground system so when installing your healthcare facility cable, your HCF, it's important to use MCI-A connectors or HCF rated connectors. Very important. Also very important, pay attention to your installation instructions. This is healthcare facility cable. You can see this larger ground wire here. This one actually gets flush cut because this is in continuous contact with the back strap throughout the MC. There's another type of cable that has a smaller gauge of this wire and it actually gets wrapped around the core gates 
a lot of contractors will mess this up and what they'll do instead of cutting this cable like that is what they'll do is they'll wrap the larger cable around here and these connectors are not designed for the outer dimension of this core gate to be different so you wind up with a bad bond that's why it's important to have the proper connector so we can continue the bond to the cable that is already in contact with the back strap of that conductor remember the small one you're allowed to wrap this larger one you simply cut it off and terminate it and that's what it will look like inside of your box there's no bare wires back there because they have been cut flush thanks for watching sub for more and that's how you install HCF. You wrap the small one and you cut the larger one. And it's actually that simple. Now, where is this cable required? Can be a little bit tricky. Let's look at where this cable is required. In 517, we... So if we look at the patient care vicinity there, you're gonna see that it says, a space with a location intended for the examination and treatment of patients extending six feet beyond the normal location of the bed, chair, table, or treadmill or other device that supports the patient during examination and treatment. So we're not stuck with the bed. It could be a chair, a treadmill, anything like that. And it says also extending vertically up to a height of seven foot six inches above the floor. That's gonna be switches, any lights, anything like that. You gotta have redundant grounding. We first saw here the bare one is in continuous contact with the back strap of this metallic cable. And this metallic cable itself counts as an equipment ground conductor. So this is how we get our redundant grounding. Same thing here. So it only makes sense to use listed connectors that's going to be able to transfer that energy from the cable itself to the connector to the box or vice versa. Maybe the current gets on the box. We need to get it back to the source. We need two paths of ground for redundant grounding. That way if we lose one, we still have another one to be able to trip the breaker on a ground fault. So if you got any questions on whether or not your space classified as patient care and needs redundant grounding, another really common mistake is that they'll do all of this grounding and bonding and all the redundant grounding and all the HCF in the walls, in the switches, everywhere it's supposed to be. And then once they get up to that junction box, they made a mistake what they do whether it's purposely or not they'll run mc cable standard mc cable which defeats the whole purpose on putting this stuff in the walls right so we got to maintain our redundant grounding all the way back to all the panel boards that feed those circuits so if we have redundant grounding in the walls obviously we're going to be feeding those rooms with redundant grounding not standard mc not just uh EMT to a box and then maybe some flex and then something else like it's all got to be Listed redundant ground system from a to Z throughout is that they run PVC to some of these dentist chairs and things like that and What happens is they try to put that redundant ground that HCF that hospital grade MC in the PVC underground and Obviously you can't do that because you can't run that stuff underground. It's not listed for use in a wet location so the correct fix is to run IMC or rigid, wrap it with a three mil tape because it's subject to corrosion because of the earth, and then convert to EMT once you get up into the wall because EMT itself is considered an equipment ground. So that's the way you get your redundant grounding, you get your equipment ground through the EMT or the rigid, and then you get that separate ground conductor, the green, for your redundant grounding system. You can look in the code book and you can see what your space is and then decide from there thanks for watching sub for more send me any photos or anything conductivewood at gmail.com for any electrical questions or just anything interesting we'll see you guys in the next one